interdisciplinary marine social scientist, which means I study interactions between people and the sea. I'm currently working in a Horizon 2020 MISO project, which is aiming to assess the sustainability of fisheries in the mesoecologic zone. So in my research, I'm curious about how scientists and managers alike are anticipating the use of the mesoecologic zone as a resource. In order to study what's going on, I'm going to be looking and listening very closely to what's happening behind closed doors in the research. I have a few suspicions that there are multiple drivers for this new interest in the mesoecologic zone. The first is the growth of aquaculture as a means of food provision all around the world. As aquaculture grows in popularity, it's looking for new sources of input to produce its feed. The mesopelagic zone could offer a really rich resource. At the same time, technological advances in fishing gear and processing are combining with the globalized food supply chain to make mesopelagic fisheries appear to be an interesting source of income for fishers. One perspective to this question could be that we're exhausting our supplies of fish in our traditional fisheries and we're looking for a new frontier in the mesopelagic zone to fill our baskets. Another perspective could be that we've finally discovered a new sustainable resource and we can tap into that to increase our supply of food and increase food security around the world. Already we see divergent ideas between researchers. Some are calling for a moratorium on deep sea fishing until we can resolve some of the uncertainty. Others are pointing to the establishment of a fishery as one of the key ways to collect enough data to really understand what happens down there. In almost every case, environmental issues are the result of individually rational decisions that create a collectively irrational outcome. So understanding human behaviour and their motivations for behaviour is essential for avoiding these irrational outcomes. My work with WG Mars has been about trying to get a better understanding of fisher behaviour, trying to understand the complicated motivations that exist for the decisions that they make. In the past in fisheries management, we've used two key simplifying assumptions to understand fisher behaviour namely profit-seeking and regulatory compliance. But if we take a more interdisciplinary approach to the subject, we see that they have several limitations. So in short, I think human behaviour is both the source of and the solution to all fisheries governance challenges. 